50 years and 10 minutes. Well, let's remember that flood insurance is the first financial responder in this country and the most important in flooding events. I've chosen 12 themes that run through the years and I'm going to try to go through those and then I'll go back through them at the end. You know, if you remember the history of our country, uh, the program got started very slowly because we were a country beginning with riverine. Rivers were our transportation. It's where the big cities built up. And so when flooding started in cities in the 1800s, uh, people started taking notice. We had uh, early 1900s, we had the great Mississippi flood and protective measures were the way out. Let's build, let's build a dam, let's build a levee. And then when the government started looking, the federal government started looking at flooding and we started having problems, uh, it, it was slow. And I'll go through the presidencies quickly, but it, it took several presidents to get the program actually launched. But it was Gilbert White's paper in 1942 and then a report he did in 58 that set the stage. President Truman wanted a flood insurance program. Eisenhower in 56 wanted indemnity and reinsurance. LBJ had a, fe a feasibility study in 1966. And then in 1998, the flood program was officially passed. It was then up to Nixon in 69 to start it and actually start running it. NFIP was at HUD, and so Ed Pasteric reminds me that it might not have ever been at HUD, except at that time, remember 68 and the, the rioting in this country and crime insurance. So flood was placed over at HUD with cities programs. So in 79, though, it was moved over to FEMA, which was largely a civil defense agency it was civil defense and disaster relief, and flood was a little bitty part of it then. Uh, the private industry, so that's sort of this slow start is one theme. It, it, took a, it took reports, it took studies, and it took time for it to get off. One of the themes that's always run through the flood program is the coupling, the partnership with the private insurance industry in flood. You know, that's a topic today, but it always has been. Uh, to start with, there was the Flood Insurance Association, which was a pool of private companies that offered flood insurance, and the government was a backstop. Frank Nutter, whom many of you have heard speak, was one of the first lawyers with that association, and that association uh, hired a servicing agent. In 77, though, for various reasons, Bob Hunter was the administrator, and the program became all government, and so agents wrote directly to the government program, much like they do through the direct servicing agent today. Uh, Hunter was an interesting character, and we could talk a lot about his tenure there. I will say that it hasn't always been as smooth a path with leadership of the program with Congress on ideas, on policies. And Hunter and Senator Eagleton had a, uh, an interesting relationship which uh, uh, affected the mandatory purchase. Well, then in 83, when Reagan became president, uh, Jeff Bragg was the federal insurance administrator. The Write Your Own program was born where the private companies wrote on their own paper, but they had an arrangement with FEMA. And now we're uh, in 2017, and uh, Dave Marstead and other strong leaders at FEMA looked at reinsurance as a backstop and through the private industry. So the private insurance industry has always been there, and it looks like they're there to stay. Another theme we want to talk about that's always run through, and that's that coupling with flood insurance and mitigation. Reducing risk has always been part of the flood program. Land use, floodplain management, and that's what you're all here about. Uh, it was Gilbert White who talked about man's relationship to the floodplains and adapting to Mother Nature. 
we had CRS born in 1983, and even the Stafford Act, the Disaster Relief Act, has pieces of mitigation in it. With mitigation uh, came uh, in an era that I'm familiar with, Project Impact, when James Lee Witt was uh, at the director of FEMA. 1996, AFSFPM moved to Madison, uh, became stronger, bigger, and thanks to Larry Larson, Diane, and that whole team, you see where all of that has led. So growth over time is another theme. The program in 1969 had four communities and 16 policies. But just two years later, there were 920 communities and 87,000 policies. It's continued to grow through mandatory purchase, which came in in 73. And then after the Midwest flooding in 94, marketing became a real important theme. We have the Cover America program started and now we have the moonshot. Well, one of the things to remember is that events and studies trigger change, and they always have with the program. Events, it takes something dramatic to happen or noticeable to happen to get Congress to move and things to change. So you had in 1966, Camille, uh, no, the, none of those communities that were damaged in the Midwest flooding had flood policies. So what happened? We decided we need to market it. We have to tell people about it more. You had ICC starting in 1977, which is such an important component of rebuilding, as you know, and uh, I believe the limits are poised to be raised because that helps people get back to a higher level of uh, rebuilding. Sandy, we had a concentration on claims and customer service, and that has been a big component of the last few years. Another theme has been rates and policies in force, and there's tension there. There's always tension. If we raise the rates, then you have some drop in coverage. If you lower the rates, then it affects the bottom line, and that seesaw keeps on and on, where's the balance? How do we do this? Uh, 1983, there was a big revision of rates and policies. The SF, SFIP was amended in 86. In 88, there were some deductible buybacks. So it, it will keep on and we're, we're poised for a really interesting, very big leap here coming up. And I think it's very exciting and I'm sure Dave Marstead will be telling you about that. Flood insurance and floodplain management go together. 86, regulation of the floodplain. 93 was when the FEMA regions started, and the regions are such an important arm of headquarters. 94, Frank Thomas was in very, very intense in floodplain management. I'm told David Sterrett worked with him at that point. 99, you have the CFM program began and that's education, certification. Risk, identifi risk identification and communication is another theme. You know, at the beginning in 69, the USGS was doing approximate flood boundaries. Think how far that has come. Uh, Matt Miller uh, was at FEMA when the transition was made from paper to digital maps. Look where the risk identification and the tools are today, LIDAR, uh, 2D, uh, on and on, we're better all the time. NFIP has also always had private industry partners, servicing agents like EDS, CSC, OST, engineering firms helping with that important risk products. You've had communication contractors, uh, program management contractors. There's been a healthy relationship with private businesses and uh, good contracting offices and high standards. You have passionate people, both in the flood program and in floodplain management, which I consider all one program. You care about your jobs. You care about the people. You're looking for ways to help them and to diminish their losses. 
And the last change I'll mention, the last theme is change. It's always going to change. And some of that change, as I said, is brought about by events. Some of it is by study, such as uh, Pew, uh, Wharton, uh, congressional offices. It's really important to have that analysis as a basis for direction. So the program adapts. Sometimes Congress takes a, a path and then has to do a U-turn, don't they? And say, oh, we didn't mean that. But it's, it's a difficult position because in a private insurance company, you would make changes as quickly as your regulators allowed. The NFIP has Congress that has to move or you have a regulation that takes 18 months for public exposure. It's not that the program doesn't want to go faster, it's that there are built-in uh, governmental processes that have to be followed. So be patient because they're trying. It's not that anyone at FEMA says, let's put it off. They're just as eager to change as you are. So resilience, survivors, I'm pleased, pleased at where the flood program is today. It's had a glorious 50 years, but it's in, as one insurance company would say, in good hands because the program has had good leadership through the years and it has excellent leaders now. This is a time for dramatic change and it's just about to happen. So we talked about NFIP has lived where it's placed, HUD, FEMA, DHS, private insurance industry has always been a partner, mitigation has always been a part. It's gone, grown over time steadily with more policies in force, more people protected. Events and studies trigger change. Tension between rates and the number of policies in force. Floodplain management is a must. Risk identification is crucial to decision-making. Private businesses have always been a part. Uh, servicing agents, direct program, uh, determination companies, lenders. There are many stakeholders. NFIP has always attracted and kept passionate people. Think about the people you know who've had their whole career in this wonderful program. It's not that they couldn't go somewhere else, it's that they chose to stay here. Change never stops. We adapt, we learn, we provide, and we reward those people and we try to recognize them, but we can do better at recognizing the people who make all this happen. And uh, Larry Larson is one of those people. So thank you for your attention and let's go for the next 50.